Hey everybody, my name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi The Brand. Today we're going to design and develop this website on the screen using the Editor X platform. It will be a long video. If you wish to skip some of the sections, the video will be timestamped. This is a sponsored video, but I wanted to let you know that I only agree to sponsored videos for tools and companies that I like. Editor X is part of the Wix.com company but it's a separate creation platform and separate brand. It combines both powerful Wix web infrastructure and business solutions. At this point, you might be wondering, what is EditX? EditX is an advanced web creation platform made for designers and agencies. Some of my favorite features include the advanced Flexbox options, grid, the docking system is pretty cool, and also being able to uh, choose and edit photos straight in the editor which we'll explore if you have any questions please comment below don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to my channel now let's jump on a computer and get started welcome everybody and let's get started by developing and designing our first website in the editor x now if you want to follow along the link will be in the description below or you can simply go to the editorx.com website and register. As you can see, I have already created an account, so I can simply go here on the right corner and just create a new site. But if you create a brand new account, Editor X will probably uh, prompt you with this screen where it's going to ask you which platform would you like to use. And of course, we're going to be using the Editor X beta today. So let's go ahead with that and I will be making some sort of a blog website today. And then the last step would be to either start a website from scratch, a blank canvas, or choose one of the many themes that they have in here. And as you can see, you can see more templates here. I'm actually re-recording this video now because I had some audio issues and I can see that they've already added new templates uh, in here, which look pretty cool. But yeah, they have hundreds of really cool templates and they're adding new templates every day. And I suggest you to maybe explore some of them and see how they're made, uh, see how elements are positioned, just play around so you can uh, get used to it. But today we're gonna go hardcore and we're gonna go with a blank canvas. So let's click edit and continue. This is how the blank canvas website looks like. Basically, we only have one page, which is the home page and we have three sections. The three sections that we have as a default are the header, an empty section that we can start adding elements straight away in here, and we also have a footer section. Now, before we do anything, I was thinking that maybe we can get familiar with the tools available in the Editor X, and then we can start developing and designing our website at the same time. So let's get started from left to right, and I will explain each tool and I will explain every single tool. We're going to be using all the tools anyway, so you're gonna learn much more as we go along. So the first tool that we have on the top uh, left corner here is add elements. We're gonna be using this quite a lot. And uh, this is basically adding uh, any types of like text, paragraphs, buttons, as you can see, we have images, videos, containers, sections, some really cool layouts here that we can choose from. And there is so much uh, you can choose from different pre-made uh, compositions in here. As you can see, they will look really cool and professional. All of the sections here are mobile friendly. So all you have to do is basically just click on one and it will be applied on your page, which is pretty cool. And uh, there is tons of them, we're probably gonna end up using a few just to show you how. And we can actually, and I will actually modify a few uh, just so you can see how you can extend the designs that they've already done. Or if you wish, you can create custom ones. It's fairly easy to do as well. Then we have different uh, layout tools, different types of text, buttons, menus, uh, media. Yeah, there is quite a lot to explore. On the second section here, we have a few different things, but the only thing that we are gonna be focusing on today is the blog. I will show you how we can create a blog. We can add it to a website. Uh, we can link some of the uh, blog posts to a homepage with a custom design and so on. 
So let's go to the next section, which is layers. Now, layers is quite, um, layers will be quite important when we develop our website. If you're familiar with HTML, basically it's the same thing. You can structure your website in different sections, uh, different areas and so on. Now, this can be quite useful when we have a lot of sections so we can move them around uh, up and down and position them the way we want. Also, each section will have uh, multiple layers. For example, a section can have uh, an image, a video, text, and so on. And maybe you want to position the text on top of an image. Uh, this is how the layers work. If you're familiar with any design tools, uh, it's more or less the same, which is pretty cool. The next bit that we need to focus on is the masters. They're basically reusable sections. For example, if you want to stay consistent and if you want to have the same header and footer across your website, you can create them in here. Uh, you can modify them and apply them to all of your pages. That means if I ever want to change the logo and if I have 10 pages, the logo will actually update on all the pages across. And saying this, we can actually create custom sections uh, reusable sections where we can just add them on any page that we like. And once we update the section again, it will update on all pages, which is pretty handy. Now let's go to the next bit, which is pages. This is self explanatory pages. This is where we'll be creating multiple pages and that's pretty much it. So this is where all the pages will be listed. The next bit is the theme manager. The way I see this is kind of like branding of your website. So you can set different headings, uh, different fonts for your headings. As you can see, we have heading one, two, three, then we have uh, paragraphs and so on. So you can set up the uh, different colors, you can set up different fonts and so on. Let me just show you quickly the colors as well. You can set up different colors in here. Uh, which can be quite handy to access later on when you're designing your website. Now let's move to the app marketplace and the app marketplace, it's what it sounds. It's basically a huge marketplace uh, that you can find pretty much anything like uh, any third party application that you might want to integrate to your website or you can use the Wix solutions, which are pretty cool as well. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because we're actually going to be using the Wix block today. The fact that they have so many apps around here that you can use and integrate to your website, it's pretty cool. The content manager, we're not going to be focusing that much today, but basically you can build custom forms uh, and collect uh, visitor information and so on. And in fact, we might end up doing um, an email sign up for form later on, but that's pretty much it. So let me close this and continue. Now the next bit in here is the pages. Basically when you click this, all the pages will be listed and you can just select on which page you want to work on. Also you can click on manage pages, which will be obviously if you want to manage the pages. The next bit here is the responsive viewport. Now this is really handy when we are developing our website. So we can quickly toggle through uh, desktop, um, tablet and mobile. And also they have this really handy uh, drag to resize bar here, which will help us to just check the website where it's working on all breakpoints as we want it to be. And the last but quite important thing that I need to uh, tell you about is the inspector. Now the inspector will be quite useful at the moment, we don't have anything in the inspector and this is because we haven't selected an element. So if I was to select the header, you will see that we get quite a few options. For example, there is alignment options in here. We have uh, size options, fixed size, fluid size, width, height, minimum weight, and so on. So yeah, this will be used quite a lot to mainly align stuff, position elements, put margins, paddings, uh, scrolling behavior and so on. So yeah, we'll be using this quite a lot. Let's start from top to bottom, uh, which means that we're gonna start with the header. The first thing that I want to do on the header is change the background color. To do this, I can just click on the header 
and we can go to this uh, paintbrush here which is the design tool so if we click on this this will give us the option of changing the background color so i've already prepared the background color uh, in here so i'm just going to press on this little square here to change it and in fact i'm going to add this color inside here so just in case i wish to reuse it later on so let's add a new color and paste the hex code add and I believe that this is the one that I just added here. So that's it. Let's close it. Opacity is 100% because I don't want it to be opaque anymore. And let's close this. Now, the next bit that I want to do is change the branding of the website. So let's click on this vector art logo. Just notice how this is positioned. As you can see, we have this line on the left side here. And if I go to the inspector, you will see that the logo is actually docked to the left side and there is a 60 pixel margin to the left which is a good thing now when i change the logo and resize it we might need to adjust this a little bit so let's close the inspector and change the logo first of all so i can go to uh, change vector art and by the way the logo has to be a vector and to be honest vector files i believe that they uh, they load much faster than images and not only that they always look sharp, especially if you're visiting the website on retina displays, which most people have nowadays. You want your branding to look as sharp as possible. So let's upload the SVG that I have. And funnily enough, I actually created this logo with the Wix logo maker, uh, which is pretty cool. So let's quickly, oh yeah. So let's select it and add the page. And as you can see, the logo is a little bit smaller than I would like. So we can use the corners here to drag it. And this will also maintain the aspect ratio for us as well. We don't want to squish our logo because that would look quite bad, I guess. Uh, but we want to make it something like this, quite visible, I think. And I also want to center align it just like, just like so. And I think this looks good. But notice that the logo is actually now docked at the top as well. And this is because I move, I'm, I resize it and I move the position. So what I want to do is go to the inspector and quickly undock it from the top. And hopefully if I was to ever change the size of the header, so let's say at the moment it's 100 pixels. Let's say I want it to be 200 pixels for some reason. As you can see, the logo always stays in the middle. And this is why the docking is pretty cool. So let me go back and we can actually use shortcut Control and Z to go back if you wish, just like so. And it's going back to 100 pixels. Let's close the inspector and continue with the rest. Now, first of all, I just want to show you that if we go to tablet mode, the logo still works really well. And if you go to mobile, the logo is working really well again. But inside here on mobile and tablet mode, we have the hamburger menu, which we're gonna have to change. And it might be best to change some of the, some of the colors for the menu. But before we do this, let me add a few pages so we can see the changes uh, for, for the other pages, because this homepage is actually the active homepage at the moment. And this is because I am on the homepage, but let me add a few more now. So if we go to pages, Inside here with the plus sign, we can add maybe contact. We can add about page. Maybe we can add things to do. Do And last, let's add where to go. And we have those pages. We can click on them uh, to visit them to see how it looks like. As you can see, the header stays exactly the same everywhere on all pages, which is pretty cool. But let's go back to the home page. Let's add the pages to the menu first of all. So if I select the menu and go to manage menu, inside here at the bottom, you see the button show pages. So if I click on that, display contact, about page, things to do and where to go, apply. This will add all of the pages. They're a little bit dark to see at the moment because the color is black, but we're going to change this in a second and I can actually reorder them from here. And in fact, this is what I want to do. I want the contact form to be the last 
page, sorry, the contact page to be last. About, um, I think I actually call it about page, so I'm going to have to go back and edit this quickly. So let me go to here and just rename this to about instead. Okay, this is much better. And let's go back to the home, close this, and let's change the styles of the menu. So if I click on the menu and click on the design icon here, then we can go to text and just change the color of the text to maybe white. Something that has a lot more contrast. I'm pretty happy with this actually. It looks pretty cool. Of course, we can change the hover effect as well. So maybe the hover, we can uh, have it, I don't know, close to white. Maybe, maybe even this would do. I think we might have to test this, but I think this would do for a hover effect. This is also the active, I believe. So maybe we can just have it as less, less dark. So something closer to white, I would say. And that looks good to me. I'm pretty happy with this. So let's go back. And as you can see, like there is quite a lot of stuff that you can do in here, but I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything. So this is all good. But when we go to tablet, uh, we have the hamburger menu. So all I want to do on this is just change the icon itself to white. Click on the icon, then design, and then go to um, fill color and opacity. The one that I want to change is the icon. So let's change this to white, close it. All right, let's preview the website quickly by clicking the preview button in here and see how it looks like. So this is the tablet mode. As you can see, this is looking nice. If we press it, it has a real nice animation. Of course, we can also design all this, but I just want to save you time and show you the important stuff in the editor X today, but maybe we can do more advanced stuff another time. This is looking pretty cool. I'm happy with this. And if we go to tablet, uh, sorry, desktop, this is also looking pretty cool and I'm happy with this. So if I click on about, you will see that now the about is clicked, things to do, it's clicked and so on. All right, this is pretty cool. I'm happy with the header. Now let's click back on edit site and move on. All right, the next bit would be to design or hero section and to do this i'm actually going to be using some of the uh, pre-made components from the uh, elements menu in here but first of all i'm going to remove this empty section by clicking on it right click and delete or you can press the backspace button and that will remove the section all right let's add a new composition and the composition that i want to add will be the first one here so let's just click on it and if you want to change the position of the actual section, the two ways of doing it, you can go here under layers and just move the section by dragging it on top of the footer, just because I want it to be under my header. Of course, this is the hero image, so it's going to be at the top of the website. And then we have the footer, so which is great. And there is another way of doing it. You can click on the section here, right click and just, we well, click on the section actually, yeah. Uh, and then go to more actions actually, and then we can move it up or down. And there is a lot of other options. This is predefined, but I want to change a few things and make it our own. First of all, this is quite a big header. It takes the full height of the available space of the screen. So it's kind of like 100%. So let's change that quickly. So I can click on the section here. And if I go to the inspector, then I want to change the minimal height to be around 80, like so, and that would do the job. I want to edit some of the styles here, but before we do that, let's quickly change the text. So let's do uh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica, and as I might as well as I'm here, I'm going to change the uh, let the space in a little bit, maybe just put as 0.1, something a little bit different. And then I'm probably going to be adding a little bit of more text. At the moment, everything is basically grouped and stacked, which means that if you add more text, all of the elements will be stacked and they will uh, work responsibly. They won't mess up the layout if you add more content, if the content is coming from for example, from a blog post dynamically, that yeah, basically it won't mess up. Saying this, I'm going to mess it up a little bit because I want to add another heading here. So 
what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to unstack this. So if I click on the stack, right click and unstack, this will unstack the elements for me so I can freely move them around. First of all, I want to change the design of the button because I'm not a big fan of those ones. So what I'm going to do is click on the button, click on design and then just change the quarters to zero. These are linked, so all the corners will change, but of course you can change them individually by clicking the link here. Of course, you can check out the hover effect as well if you wish. Let's change the contact us button as well. So design, corners, and zero. The next bit that I want to do is add a little bit of text at the top. So what I can do is either I can go to the add elements menu and drag another heading, or I can simply duplicate this by doing Ctrl and D, which is a shortcut, or you can right click and just duplicate. As you get used to it, the shortcuts will make your process much quicker, of course. So they're worth uh, looking at. And let's change this text to something else like Explore. I'm going to actually change the font for this. So let's go with Futura, something uh, more yeah, that, that would work quite well. I want to make this a lot smaller, actually. That's actually not too bad. So let's just change the Explore character spacing to I don't know, something like this. I think this would do. Let's click off it and just position it here for now. Now, this is actually looking pretty cool. Obviously, it's a little. this image is a little bit dark and I'm not sure if this image is from Costa Rica. So we're definitely going to have to change the image in a second. But before we do that, let me actually show you how we can stack those elements and which will make it, which will make it easy to position. Uh, send, we can center align the whole block. And of course, if we ever expand the text, the text will stack. So to do this, we can click on Explore, hold Shift, click on uh, Costa Rica, and by holding shift again, I am not letting go of the shift and then clicking on this container here. Then we can click on this stack uh, button here and this will stack the uh, all of the elements for us, which means that I can move them around and position them however I want. So what I'm going to do is position this in the center of the page, but I also want to undock it. So let's go to the inspector and undock it from the top. The reason I'm undocking it is because if I ever want to change the size of the hero image of the uh, heading here, I want this section to always be in the middle. And this will actually probably help us with the responsive design as well. So if we want to check it out on uh, the other screens, we can go here. And as you can see, we're gonna have to change maybe a little bit of the size uh, in a second and on mobile we're gonna have to change it but this is literally one second job and I'm gonna do this in a second. Now before we do anything else, before we change the design anymore, I want to change the image. To change the image, click on it, change image and then Wix has a few different options. You can A, either upload your own photos, B, you can upload from uh, the Wix media which is pretty cool so you can use any of those images and they, as you can see, they're all very professional, uh, quite nice actually. We also have two more options, which are Shutterstock, uh, which is a paid service, I believe. We have Unsplash. Unsplash is the website that I pretty much always use for most of my tutorials. So I'm going to use Unsplash today. They have so many images and usually all you have to do is give credit to the creator. So let's go with Costa Rica and find some images. This basically saves us from going to Unsplash and downloading the images, uploading them, and so on. Uh, we can just check them out straight away from here, see whether we like them or we don't. So the one that I'm actually going to use for my hero image is this one here. This one is created by Max Bender. So let's click on the image and update. As you can see, the image was updated straight away, which is pretty cool, but it doesn't look that great. One feature that I really like on the Editor X is the focal point. So I can actually change the focal point to this image. To do this, you can just simply click on the image and then go to the focal point here. Then 
we can change the focal point of the image and maybe we can just have it around here, around the mountain. It's not really a mountain, but you get the point. Okay, this is actually quite nice. I really like this. So we can close this now and we can actually change the focal point on uh, different viewpoints as well, which is pretty handy. Sometimes you might get, you might not get a good contrast between your text. So if I go to mobile, for example, um, maybe, I mean, th this would, this is, yeah, as you can see here, we don't have a good contrast. So I could potentially change the focal point to be a little bit down here. So where is the darker part? And that would work absolutely fine. So I love this feature, it's pretty cool. Maybe we can change this to black, I'm not too sure, let's have a look. You can always experiment, I guess. Um, I don't know. Maybe it needs to be the yellow color. I have to mess around with this uh, and choose the one that I like. I don't wanna waste any more of your time, me uh, just messing around with uh, colors and so on. And let's just go ahead with this for now because it doesn't look too bad. The next step I want to focus on is obviously fixing it on tablet. Uh, this will be actually a fairly easy task. So what we can do is go back to tablet. Now we could, the few ways of doing it, we could select the whole stack and just maybe like expand it. And in fact, let's go to the inspector and do it as 90%. And I want to dock it in the middle of the page. And as you can see, this is already working. The only thing I probably would change is this text here. So let's change. Let's just change it by clicking this here. And that's pretty cool. So let's go mobile now and do exactly the same thing. Maybe the whole stack can be 100% this time. Uh, no margins, zero margin. And then it's stacked in the middle. So 100%. maybe let's go for 90%, have it docked right in the middle, like so. Actually, this needs to change as well. I think this needs to move inside here. But this is going to take a little bit of uh, playing around, of course. Everything should be stacking inside here. So let's just say 100%. Oh, I think the text might be a little bit too big. So let's just quickly change this. Okay, this is a little bit better. I mean, and then we can actually uh, remove any margins. Have it as fluid. Have this one as 100%. Uh, the buttons, I think the width, or maybe it's the buttons that is breaking. Yeah, I think it might be the buttons that is breaking the layer. So let's have the buttons 100, instead of pixels, 100%. Is that going to work? And yeah, okay, this was what break was breaking it, it was the buttons. So I can now do this as 100%. And as you can see, this is center aligned. It's looking okay. Maybe I would probably change the size of the section now. So click on the section, go section here, uh, and change it to like even 400. Uh, make sure that the stack is docked in the middle. Uh, let's move it Doo -doo 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 -doo, like so, okay. Yes, and okay, and I think that might work. Okay, so let's go back. That's looking nice, that's looking nice. All right. I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously we can mess around with it more uh, and improve the design, but we've already spent enough on this section. The next thing that I want to create is the block. Let's go to the app marketplace, scroll down and find the block. And also you can search for it, but I know that is around here. So I can click on Wix block, add it, then add to site. And this will ask me to choose whether we want a simple blog or we want a blog with a members area. I'm just going to go with the uh, simple Wix blog. So let's click that. 
and just like this our blog should be now working this is actually the blog page as you can see we have free demo articles in here which we can visit and maybe we can explore later on also we need to add the blog page to a menu so let's click on menu manage menu and show pages click on blog apply and then just drag the blog and run here maybe yeah i think that would do let's do that and if we wanted to see the blog super quickly i will show you how it looks like so if we go to preview we can click on one of the blog posts like so and you can see that you have a nice little avatar your uh, name and all sorts of cool stuff uh, all this all the blog posts they have rich editors so you can add any sorts of media uh, very easy to edit and add more contributors to it and yeah you can have a comment section it's pretty cool so this is pretty much the blog uh, but I'm not going to do much more on this for now. Also, I want to mention that they are SEO friendly. So if I was to edit this super quickly and manage post, you will see that they, let's have a look. Every single blog post in here will have a lot of settings, SEO friendly settings that you can change like the slug, the page title, categories, and so on. And let's actually change this photo here to something more like a Costa Rica like. So let's go to Unsplash Costa Rica. Uh, let's just choose this monkey. Like so. And I'm not going to update the blog post itself. I'm just going to choose the cover photo and publish this. So let's do the, the same thing for the other two. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're actually going to pull the data from a blog post to the front page. Uh, so it shows always the latest free blog post with the images and links. It would be pretty cool. So let's update this one as well. Unsplash and then close the Rica. Let's publish this and go back to our home page so to do this we can go to home okay let's now create the second section which will be basically displaying the article and to do this to save us a little bit of time i'm going to use another one of the pre-made compositions here and the one that i want will be i believe we can either choose this one here is pretty cool the one that i wanted to use is where is it? Banners. Uh, it was kind of like a free column section. Uh, yeah, this one here. I quite like this one here. So let's just use this one here. Add it, and instead of services, let's just rename these two articles. Now to hook up the data from the blog post. We're actually going to have to convert this, these um, sections into repeaters. And first of all, I've seen that this is actually overtaking my uh, header section. So what I'm going to do is quickly move this down. Okay. And now we can focus on this. All right. As we can see, this is actually already a um, repeater if we um, inspect the element here. So technically speaking, we should be able to start connecting our data. But I think in order to create to connect the data from the database, we might have to go to the content manager and just click add to site. Let's have a look at whether this works. Okay, when I clicked on this, this actually enabled the connection bit. Um, so yeah, I think I had to go to the content manager and enable it. Uh, so it shows me this connect data. So if I click on the image and click on connect the data, we should get the connect repeater. And what I want to do is connect this image to, actually, first of all, we need to uh, create a database or data set, sorry, and then choose the data set, which will be post from blogs. And we can just keep this name post database, great. And now I can connect this image source to the actual cover image like so. I can connect the all text of the image to the maybe title. Um, Tooltip could be the title as well, and a link, link could be the post page URL. 
So let's do that quickly. And I can do the same thing for the title. I can click on the title, connect to data, and then just select text connects to title text. And then last but not least, I can connect the text in here to maybe the excerpt of the blog post. So we can do text connects to the excerpt text and we are pretty much done. Now I could actually add a button here and that would repeat three times. So if I was to do that, let's have a look at the buttons. Um, I don't know if I want to add a button now, but I, I could have add maybe like read more, but yeah, let's add a button. So this button will go under here uh, and it's gonna be a stacked button. So it fits nicely. As you can see, I like the alignment so far. It doesn't look too bad. And instead of view more, let's edit this text to read more and add link. Actually, instead of adding link, we need to connect this to another data. The click action connects to, and this will be post URL and label connects to, I don't know, title. I think that would do. And as you can see, this repeated three times. It hasn't actually updated, but I think when I save it and preview it, uh, it should update. So if I preview this, actually, yeah, we definitely don't want this text. So what I'm gonna do is go back quickly and unlink the actual label. I don't want that. So not connected. All right, this is much better. So we just read more, that would be the best way. And let's preview this. And as you can see, we have the read more buttons. Uh, they are taking, I should have changed the colors, but it's not a big deal. And this is now linked to the actual blog post. As you can see, the images are coming from the blog post, which uh, we can actually see here in a second. And actually let's, yeah, let's read this one here. As you can see, it will be linked. Uh, edit site, is it linked? Uh, let's have a look. A link connects to page URL, yep. Okay, so maybe if we save this and publish the website, and let's click on the link here and let's go down, let's go down. And as you can see, we can click on read more and this will lead us to the blog post, which is pretty cool. Um, and as you can see, if we go to blog, the same blog posts are listed. So that's pretty handy. I quite like this feature. The next bit I want to do is let's go back. And obviously we need to link this button as well. So let's change this to view or articles like so. And we can actually just add a link to this and just do a web address. So the web address will be actually not web address, pages, sorry. And then we can link this to the blog page and we're done. So this should work now and we can save. All right, the next section will be actually quite interesting. What I want to achieve is I want to basically do something exciting on the layout, like a video on the left side with a little bit of text on the right side. And again, to save time, I can use another composition from here and just edit it. Actually, the one that I wanted to use was um, in here in welcome. And it's one of the, and it's this one here, plan your adventure. And I think that the text I won't have to change as well to save time. So this is a pretty cool section. And what I want to do is instead of adding, having an image here, I want to actually add, I want to actually embed a video from YouTube and maybe we can even autoplay it just to make it look cool. Uh, of course, it's gonna be muted. Now, first of all, let me go ahead and pull out a video. So we can go to add media and then we can go to video box. And then we can just uh, drag the YouTube one. We can actually provide the YouTube source uh, with the URL. So if we click change video and I can just replace this with the one that I found on YouTube. It's like a really nice 4K Costa Rica video. I will link this in the description below as well. And if you look uh, here, we have autoplay and you can also place in loop. So maybe we can both, we can do both and this video, as you can see, this video will be played on mute, which is the right thing to do. You don't want the audio to play on the website. It's just not a nice experience. So let's close this. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. 
while keeping the aspect ratio and I'm going to, I think this might work quite well. And I'm going to remove the image here, the one below. So I'm going to click delete. And as you can see, this is already working quite well, but I want to make sure that this is docked in the middle. So let me undock it. And is it centered in the middle? Uh, I think this is middle, isn't it? So this, uh, it doesn't have to be super perfect, but Okay, I think we might have to just give this section a little bit of like, uh, let's just reset. Now, I like the margin on the left side, but let's undock it from the top and let's give this section, um, let's give this section a little bit of padding from the top, maybe like, I don't know, 80? too much and maybe at the bottom we need can do 80 as well and i think that would look a little better and if we hide this make sure this is uh, this is docked from the right side which is the way i want it and now we can use the layers menu from here and just make sure that this container of the text is above the video like so and i quite like this it gives it like a real nice effect if I was to preview this now, you will see that in just a few seconds, we created like a really cool looking section like this, uh, which is quite nice, I believe. All right, let's now continue. I'm not going to link this to anything for now, just to save time, but let's continue with the next section. And, and that would be like a informational section where, where we're gonna put travel information. As you can see with the comment, all the content is dummy anyway, but I want to show you a really cool effect that we can do as well. So let's add another section first of all, and I'm going to use another composition actually. And the composition that I want to use this time will be, it's going to take me a few seconds to find. And yeah, this is the actual section that I want to use. So it's in the product and let's uh, click on that. And I'm just going to change the text a little bit. And also I want to move this section uh, below the plan your adventure first of all. So let's right click on that section, move uh, down. All right, that looks good. And then we can just change the text, which I've already prepared here, which will be traveling to Costa Rica. And I'm going to copy, um, leave this dummy text in here. And what I want to do in this section is first of all, let's change the image super quickly, which I've already showed you how to do. So change image, Unsplash, Costa Rica. And the image that I want to use would be the one, uh, this one here. So update, I quite like the look of it already. So I'm not going to change the focal point on this one, but what I want to do is actually give it a little bit of a parallax effect by clicking settings and then scroll behavior, we can do parallax. All right, check this out now. So if you go to preview, then if I was to scroll up and down, look at how beautiful this is. I quite like it. It's nice and subtle. It gives it this uh, depth of field. And obviously if I view this on full screen, uh, it will look even nicer. So let's continue. And I'm pretty much done with this section. The last bit that I wanted to show you is and by the way, this is the this is the data connection uh, on the articles. Uh, it's just flowing around for some reason, but maybe we can just have it here so it doesn't uh, get in the way. Um, yeah, the post data uh, set that is. So the last thing that uh, we could do is uh, I wanted to because this is like a blog and it's an informational site. It makes sense to have a subscribe to email list. And to do this, it's actually fairly easy. Let's create a custom section first of all. So we can go to quick add, uh, create a section, and this will be a blank section. We can move this section down like so. And I'm not gonna put too much effort into this. Obviously we can make it nice, uh, but what I want to do is add a new element and under forms, contact and forms, we can go to subscribe and we can use the Wix uh, subscribe to a mailing list form. Basically what that would do is every time somebody signs up to your mail list, uh, this will be actually, the record will be actually saved 
in the database in your admin dashboard so you can access it straight away. Uh, you don't have to do any third party integration and so on. So this is pretty cool. And of course, the docking, as you can see, is docked at the top. So maybe we can change this super quickly, like undock it. I'd actually make sure that it's in the middle, first of all. Yep. Like so. I think that's middle. Zero, actually. Undock. And then, yeah. I think that would work. And obviously, this will be responsive as well. As you can see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is all nicely responsive. It looks beautiful. Uh, the only section that I would probably change, I would maybe do the video uh, to be, but this is like a design preference more than anything. I would probably do this to be like 90% and make sure, obviously make sure that this is docked. Yeah, make sure that this is in the middle, maybe 90%, maybe more. Um, just make sure that it's docked in the middle. Again, you can do it for mobile as well. Uh, choose however you want it. In fact, this is okay for mobile. And that's looking pretty cool so far. So let me uh, save this first of all. And I'll show this again. And if I go back to the desktop, the last thing that I want to show you is if you wanted to edit uh, some of the other pages, you can simply go to, for example, let's go to the about page and you can literally start adding sections. Uh, let's say, about and at about section like so obviously change this to something costa rican in this case uh or oh, this one here looks pretty cool actually yeah something like this and as you can see this is now the about page so if i was to save this and preview uh we have our about page pretty much working straight away we have the home. And before we actually wrap up with this video, one last thing that I wanted to show you, if you want to take your design to the next level, maybe we can add a little bit of animation to the layout. And to do this, we can actually add animation to individual elements, or we can add it to a whole group of elements. So I could potentially just uh, click on the whole stack and just do animation, fade in. And I think this would be absolutely beautiful. But also, I could go to the Explore, click here, Animation, and just add Fade In. And you can also time it. So this will be 1.2 seconds duration. So let's time the next one to be, I don't know, 1.6 Fade In. And they have a lot of animation, by the way, but I just like the Fade In because it's uh, quite subtle. So 1.6, is that two or four? Let's do four. And then let's add this container here. Let's add, what is it, 1.8 maybe? I don't know, something like that. 1.8, 1.8 like this. And last but not least, we might as well just add a little bit of parallax in this as well, just because it looks cool. Obviously, don't use overuse parallax, but uh, let's preview. Uh, let's publish this. And if we refresh again, so if we go to the website, you will see that we get this uh, really nice animation. Maybe it could be uh, a little bit more delayed and then we get the parallax. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely change the animation a little bit. The animation can definitely be a little bit improved. Uh, and now the text is a little bit uh, hard to see because of the parallax. We can always change the focal point to adjust this and so on, but To around there, publish, and and this is pretty much the final website now. Uh, the parallax is working really well. We have the articles here which are linked. Uh, you can view articles. We have this real cool video from YouTube. Um, we have this nice parallax effect here and we have the main list and I'm not going to do the uh, footer just because you probably already know how to do that now and so on. We have the blog post and so on. If you stay to the end, I just wanted to show you something really funny. 
So let's go quickly back to the editor and go to uh, decorative here. And what I want to do is animals and nature. And what I actually found in the video box, actually, sorry, uh, if you scroll down, I'm not sure whether there is tigers in Costa Rica, but uh, you can actually add this tiger, which is pretty funny, I think. And you can add it around here. As you can see, we have really mean cats just walking around our website, which is pretty funny. And that's everything from this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it useful. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know in the description below. Don't forget to smash the like and consider subscribing to my channel. That's everything from me. Adios, amigos, ya amigas.